Now, we mentioned that the only force acting on it is the gravitational force. We'll talk about the gravitational force a little bit in more detail later, but here we mention a few things. For every object that we are going to deal with, it's going to have a mass. Uh, the mass uh, is going to be determined by the makeup of that object, the amount of matter in that object. Uh, so the quantity of mass is usually measured in kilograms. Um, it is not measured in pounds. We'll get back to that later on. It is measured in kilograms or grams. That's mass. Now, mass is different from weight. Mass is a quantity of matter. Weight is a force. Weight is what we call the force of gravity. Weight is the gravitational force It is due to the Earth pulling that mass towards it. That's, where, that's why an object would have weight, because the Earth is going to pull down on it. Now, gravity, or the gravitational force, is going to be larger on larger masses. It's not going to be the same for all masses. Be careful with this. Even though on the previous screen, we said objects in free fall are going to all fall with the same acceleration. Okay, they are going to follow the same acceleration. But that's a different story from saying that the gravitational force on objects of different mass is going to be different. And we are going to have a larger gravitational force for larger masses. The gravitational force, the way we usually, uh, the symbol that we usually use for it would be F sub G, F for force is G for gravitational, or W for weight. The value of the gravitational force at the surface of any planet, Earth included, would be M, the mass of the object, M would be the mass, times g. Note, uh, note here I put arrows on top of the force to say direction is important and I put it on top of the g saying direction is important. Now the magnitude of g is 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, I think it's 32 feet per second squared in the British system of units. Now, that's the magnitude. Uh, this is for the Earth. On the Moon, it's about a sixth of that. Uh, so it depends on the planet. On Mars, it's going to be different, and so on. But for the Earth, this is the, the approximate value. We'll talk later on about it. It's actually not the same value everywhere of, at the surface of the Earth. But approximately, we are at that level. And the direction of G is downwards, towards the center of the Earth. It's always downwards. Now, a few things before we move on. When an object is in free fall, how many forces act, in, uh, act on it? Just a re as a reminder here. The definition of free fall is that the only forces acting on an object are the one force, the gravitational force. So there is only one force. Second question, what is the net force on an object in free fall? Remember the definition of net force. Net force is the unbalanced force. Now, if an object is in free fall, there is only one force acting on it, the gravitational force and it is unbalanced. So the net force is just the gravitational force. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. Okay. Now, in free fall, what if we have a ball and a feather? Which one is going to hit the ground first? Okay, if it is in free fall, if we don't have air resistance, I'm sure you all know the answer. Okay, I have several videos here that you can go and watch for yourself. I'm going to show one of them. These two are the same video, uh, but in the bottom one link, he shows you essentially how to build the setup that he used in that video. It's the same person. Uh, and then here, and actually, if you look in Instructables, I think, dot com, I believe that's the website, I'm, I'm not sure I have it right. If you look at Instructables uh, dot com, he will have also uh, another tutorial on how to build it. So this is a device uh, to drop two objects either under vacuum or no vacuum. Here is uh, kind of an easier device. Not as tricky, but uh, to show the same thing. It involves more complicated stuff as well. Now teach, uh, here I just put teacher tube just uh, so you'll be familiar with it if you are not, and YouTube, and we have the NASA website for a download. Here is for the experiment done on the moon. I actually pulled up that video and I'll show it to you in a second uh, and I'm going to show you I believe the top one uh, since it's shorter okay here is the NASA video so I have to uh, change a little bit this to a pointer Okay, now this experiment was done on the moon because, as you well know, at the surface of the moon there is no atmosphere, so there is no air resistance. There is no air resistance, so you see them both are in free fall and they fall at the same rate. Of course, the acceleration at the surface of the moon is not going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. It's going to be something else. So here, what you need to pay attention to is not only the acceleration that's the same, they both started with the same startup velocity or initial velocity. They both were dropped, meaning the initial velocity of both is zero. And then they had the same acceleration, so their velocities throughout the motion were the same, and their displacement throughout the motion was the same. Okay, let me show you another one. This one is done in a lab. It's going to show us first a feather and ball falling in air, and then the experiment is redone after uh, we remove the air. So the feather was on the left, the ball was on the right, and they didn't fall at the same rate. Here, vacuum, you see the ball here for evacuation, and they fall at the same rate. I'm going to redo this because it happens so fast. This is where the ball is held, and it's going to fall here. Here is where the feather is held, and it's going to fall here. Okay, I'll redo it.
Notice. Okay, the feather took some time to fall. And now here. Same way. 